The City of Jacksonville and JTA proposing an extension and increase of the gas tax to pay for nearly a billion dollars in critical infrastructure needs. We're sitting down with the CEO of JTA, Nat Ford, as we talk about the proposal and the projects it would pay for, as well as discussing how the agency is helping people get vaccinated. Also, JEA has a new board of directors, a new leader, and a new direction. That new CEO, Jay Stowe, is here to talk about the utility's future. All that on This Week in Jackson. Good morning. I'm Rick Mullaney, director of the Public Policy Institute at Jacksonville University, filling in for Kent Justice today. He'll be back next week. Nat Ford, the CEO of JTA, has received local and national attention for his innovation and leadership. Now JTA, with the city of Jacksonville, is proposing a gas tax increase to help address critical infrastructure needs in Duval County, including transportation and phasing out septic tanks. JTA is also supporting the effort to distribute vaccines in North Florida and seeking to transform transportation in the region and downtown. Nat, welcome to the program. Thanks for being with us. And we have a lot to cover today. No, thank you. And uh, <laughs> I appreciate the uh, opportunity to talk to you about everything transportation. Well, let's talk first about the gas tax proposal. Yes. Nat, this is potentially one of the biggest infrastructure initiatives in the history of the city of Jacksonville. Why this proposal and why the gas tax? Well, you know, uh, I think it's critical for our community. When you start looking at great cities, great cities have great transportation. And we've done very well over the years in terms of the programs and infrastructure we've built up until this point. But if we look over the next 30 years, there is some significant needs that need to be addressed in terms of transportation. The gas tax has a lifespan, you know, and over the next 30 years, we believe leveraging that gas tax to f fulfill these, I think, these infra infrastructure projects that are so critical, it's the right time. Uh, and the time is now. It started with the mayor's uh, initiative last year. We were very concerned that the uh, COVID-19 pandemic was going to have a negative impact in terms of jobs and the economy here locally. And the mayor convened a task force of the independent authority CEOs and business leaders in this community, along with the city, to look at what were the infrastructure projects that we could rapidly uh, fund and actually get people back to work if there was a recession. Through that exercise, working, continuing to work with the city, we've identified a number of projects that, uh, from a funding standpoint, would go very far in terms of infrastructure projects. Well, Nat, to understand it better, let's break it down. Yes. What is the current gas tax? Yes. What's allowed by state law? Mm -hmm. What is this proposal? So right now, uh, the JTA and the city enjoys a six cents gas tax on each, uh, six cents on every gallon of gas sold in Duval County. We split that with the city, five cents going, coming to the JTA, one cents for the city. The, over the past few years, uh, part of that arrangement was the JTA took over the St. John's River Ferry, and then we took over the remaining Better Jacksonville Plan projects. Gervin Road, Kernan Boulevard, a number of projects that I think a num our citizens have seen come to fruition and are very satisfied with. The one penny was for the city to do road maintenance and, and, and move that forward. That was for a 20-year period from 2016 to 2036. And that's already in place. That's already in place, and that's at six cents. Uh, there is capacity for another 10 years, going to a full 30-year uh, uh, assessment of that tax. Then there is capacity under state law to go from six cents for uh, up to 12 cents in terms of the so gas So each tax. county in Florida is allowed to go up to 12 cents. Right, and it, uniquely, the, uh, Jacksonville is only uh, one of 12 that are not for, uh, is one of 12 that are not, uh, uh, that are at the six cents level. Most of the uh, counties around the state of Florida are far beyond six cents. And in some cases, Nassau and uh, Clay County is at 12 cents. And so they, that, and the local option gas tax can only be used for transportation projects, which uniquely in our case, we have transportation needs. And so the plan is expansion of the 10 years, uh, to, to a full 30, uh, the current. On the and six cents. On the six cents. And then an additional six cents for a full 30 years, going from 2022 uh, to 2052. Uh, uh, it depends on at what point that the city council approves this. So when this is in place, yes. how much money will it raise? Yes. And, and what can it do in terms of projects? For, for, so uh, nearly a billion dollars. So a billion dollars in funding over the next 30 years with the two, the expansion, and the extension in t as it relates to the gas tax. Between the city and the JTA, we have negotiated that we would split that, the, that funding 50-50. Uh, 
uh, with uh, half of it coming to the JTA, half going to the city. The city has its capital investment plan uh, and it's able to advance what is five years worth of capital investment plan projects, transportation related, and rapidly advance those project imme projects immediately. For the JTA, we have state of good repair needs. We have to replace buses. We have facilities that have to have ongoing maintenance. We have what we call a complete streets program where we will go into a quarter and sidewalk improvements, bike lane installations, resurfacing, uh, uh, bus stops, ADA accessibility, uh, disabled accessibility to bus stops. So it is, I, I, I don't like using this acronym too much, but all boats get lifted in this effort. Also, there's a new ferry boat, a uh, second ferry boat uh, actually in the JTA list of projects. A compelling list, Nep. Let me ask you this, is the gas tax the best way to go about funding these infrastructure needs in your opinion? Uh, yes, because that money clearly is going directly, the gas tax is a user fee as it relates to utilization of uh, motor fuels, it's going directly to transportation projects. So I think there's direct uh, lineage between uh, the source and the actual use in terms of gas tax. And it, and it actually, from an implementation standpoint, requires a majority of the city council. And so uh, when we did that exercise over the past year, we identified, one, the need in terms of projects, but more importantly, what was a reasonable uh, funding source that, frankly, uh, is not just impacting the citizens of Duval County. Now we have, mm -hmm. I want to follow up some more. We have yeah. to take a, a quick break. Yes. S stay here with us. Uh -huh. uh, we have to take a quick break. Mr. Ford is staying with us. Ahead, more on the proposed gas tax, as well as JTA support for vaccine distribution and innovation in transportation. Next on This Week in Jacksonville. Have trouble sleeping? We're right there with you. We've got some pro tips for catching Z's, no pills necessary. And there's a health alert you may not know about, Monday at 7 a.m. Ready, set, go. Go, boy, go! Go, boy, go! Go, boy, go! Go, boy, go! Live big in the larger-than-life SUVs from GMC. The GMC Acadia, Terrain, and all-new Yukon. Current eligible GMC lessees can get this low mileage lease on this 2021 Terrain SLE for around $199 per month. We are professional grade GMC. You're right. That's the fifth floor problem. Okay. Mountain miles. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Not today. <laughs> Jimmy, how happy are folks who save hundreds of dollars switching to Geico? Happier than the campaign with Tembo blocking a shot. <laughs> Get happy. Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Your all-time hero. Your once-in-a-lifetime chance to finally ask that question. Okay. Precious Baggins 25. Okay. You know, I've always wanted to know... What's that? But if slow upload speeds were to ruin your only oh, shot, uh, just remember, you're not a bad fan. You just need better uh, internet. Got my ears done and everything. AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience with 20 times faster upload speeds than cable. Get AT&T Fiber. Plan starting at $35 a month for a year. Limited availability in select areas. Call 1-877-ONLY ATT. When choosing a lawyer, the choices seem unlimited. Truth is, few lawyers have the money and talent needed for your case. Some need the money more than you do. Here's what's important to know. The insurance company has unlimited money. Some of our cases have over $100,000 in cost alone with expert witnesses, trial exhibits, and investigations. We fight fire with fire. Size is our strength. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. Is your car giving you a ugh filled day? Bring it in. We'll fix that. Get a $100 prepaid card with purchase of four select tires from leading brands like BF Goodrich, Cooper, and Nexen. Only at Tire Kingdom. In the black community, hair is a thing. You're in first, second, third, fourth grade where people say you have bad hair or you have good hair. 
told by a professor, you know, my hair was too urban, and that wasn't going to work. Times have changed. Black women are breaking barriers. And it doesn't happen unless you do what this station has done by allowing women to be women and black women to be who they want to be. This is who you are. We're accepting it. It is OK for you to look and be beautiful exactly how God made you. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. Welcome back, and thanks for staying with us. We are continuing our discussion with Nat Ford, the CEO of JTA, and discussing the proposed gas tax increase, as well as vaccine distribution and innovation in transportation for North Florida. Nat, uh, in the first segment, we talked a lot about the policy behind yes. the gas tax, which projects it'll cover, how much money will be raised. I want to shift a little bit and talk about the politics of it. Right, At the right. Public Policy Institute, we say policy is one thing, public support is another. Certainly the mayor, a Republican mayor, with a very bold uh, proposal here. What about the politics of passing the gas tax, especially now with maybe some rising gas prices? Well, I, I think these things are always a challenge, and I think we do have to do our due diligence, and we would expect our elected officials to do their due diligence. And I think what we see, though, is clearly a need here. Uh, in terms of transportation infrastructure. When I talk about uh, these projects and talk about the needs, uh, you, it's hard to argue against it because there is clearly no other source at this juncture that it will allow us to address these needs that have been here for quite some time. Uh, if I look at the issue related to transportation, it doesn't stop there because with this proposal, it frees up general fund money in the city's budget that then can go and address some of the issues related to septic tanks and, uh, and really start making some progress as it relates to that. So uh, for the mayor, hats off to him uh, in terms of uh, showing some courage and leadership moving this forward at this time. And uh, I hope that we have similar support from the city council to approve this and move it forward. Uh, the needs are great and uh, the time is now. Uh, there, things are not going to get any less expensive. The needs are not just going to go away, and we need to find a smart way to address those needs. We have limited time, so I do want to take a little bit of a shift because right. the JTA is playing an important role in the distribution of vaccines. How about describing for us the role of JTA and what it's doing when it comes to vaccine distribution? Well, the JTA, we care about this community, and uh, we recognize on a daily basis uh, the riders we carry every day uh, that support this community. Uh, it gives us, I think, an uh, interesting perspective in terms of transportation in our community, particularly as it relates to certain parts of our community that, does, that do not have readily accessible automobile uh, at, in their driveway. And so we're, we have a very diverse community. Uh, we feel our role as the JTA is to support our community and we do it best through our transportation infrastructure and services. We recognized in the latter part of last year that there was going to be a logistic challenge, logistics challenge, because vaccinations, wherever they were going to be distributed, how are you going to get 100% of this population there if they choose to take uh, uh, to have a vaccine? Uh, 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 vaccination. And so we uh, developed a vaccination transportation plan. We're very proud of it. It's thinking outside of the box, using our existing bus services that we provide. We have a very robust public transit system, but expanding some of our private sector services, our contracted services. Now, is, that, is some of this free? Uh, yes, definitely, uh, you know, particularly for our seniors, uh, on, a, you know, our, on our regular services, seniors ride uh, at a discount. We decided to allow them to ride for free because they are one of these vulnerable populations as it relates to health and as it relates to transportation. And so it was a no, you know, it was pretty straightforward what we were needed so to do So if you want there. a free ride, who do you contact and how do you go about getting it? Yeah, so contact the JTA and uh, we, we have a cell phone number, I mean, not cell phone number, we have a number, customer service number for you to contact and, and be able to call and get a ride. And uh, I'll, I'll give you that in the next segment and I'll make sure I have that in my notes. But uh, the idea is that uh, you make this phone call, we will arrange through Ready Ride or we will arrange through our normal bus services to get you to uh, a vaccination and get a shot in your arm. Now, at the very beginning, I mentioned how you've received some local and national recognition for innovation and transportation with JTA. Short period of time, but two big areas. One is I do want to talk about the regional center that opened up just about a year yes. ago and what it means to the future of the region in terms of transportation and how COVID over the last year has impacted it. Yes, and so uh, we're very excited about the Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center. It was in the plans for decades and we were fortunate, uh, our team, to really 
get it off the shelf and get it built. Uh, unfortunately, the, the pandemic hit at the time that we were planning on opening it uh, last year. We took about another uh, month or so uh, to put in this, what we believe were the right safety precautions from a health perspective, social distancing signs, uh, facilities so people can actually uh, sanitize their hands, things of that nature. Uh, we're, so, we're so proud of that facility. It is a true Grand Central Station for Northeast Florida. Uh, all of our services connect there, our First Coast Flyer Bus Rapid Transit, the Skyway connects there. Uh, we have Go Tuckin, a privately operated downtown uh, 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 transportation network. And then we have regional services. We have uh, express bus services from St. John's County, from Clay County, as well as from uh, Nassau County that connect into this true regional center. Across the street, uh, Forsyth, Forsyth, if you go over the pedestrian uh, walkway, uh, you have inner city connectivity with Greyhound, Megabus, and uh, uh, Red Coach. And then in the far future, if, uh, if, if, if I would have my preference, uh, we'd be able to introduce rail back into the La Villa area uh, and right in the, the, within our arm's throw of uh, the regional transportation center. One last innovation for our last topic for, for today, mm -hmm. and that is the Bay Street Innovation Corridor. Yes. In particular, its relation to potential development at the stadium and Lot J. It wasn't a big part of the conversation, yes. but this is a visionary plan involving automated uh, vehicles. How about discussing that? You know, uh, we, uh, that innovation has gotten worldwide, uh, worldwide attention because it will be truly one of the first public automated driverless public transportation networks uh, in, the, in the country and maybe even in the world in terms of uh, the, the, the system. We are very, very proud of this uh, innovation. Uh, it started years ago when we started looking at the Skyway and what it would be in the future. Uh, a lot of opinions around that. We had the Skyway Advisory Committee, which met and decided not just to keep the Skyway, but to find a way to advance it. The Bay Street Innovation Corridor is that first expansion uh, of that uh, of the Skyway, and then ultimately it will lead to the conversion of the Skyway. And so we're very excited about the Bay Street Innovation Corridor. In our last 30 seconds, what's the timetable? The timetable on Bay Street Innovation Corridor, which within the next three years, we're finalizing negotiations with a proposer uh, to do a design, build, operate and maintain, so it'll be a privately operated and maintained service uh, so that we, uh, we make sure that we have the best and the brightest from a technology uh, perspective delivering this for, the, for our citizens. Nat, thank you so much for being with thank us. Thank you. We have to take a quick break. JEA has new leadership and a new direction. Here to discuss JEA and its future is the CEO of JEA, Jay Stowe, next on This Week in Jacksonville. studies show reading is the best skill for children to succeed. March is Reading Awareness Month, and that's why News for Jacks and Douglas Law Firm are teaming up to help five local classrooms embrace the joy of reading. Parents and teachers, write us or send a video showing us why your child or classroom loves reading. We will announce five winners the first week in April on The Morning Show. Those winners will receive a $100 gift card to use toward new books and a pizza party for their classroom. Go to newsforjacks.com slash reading to submit your entries. When preparing a proper meal, always set your fork at 9 o'clock. Sit up straight. We never slouch. <laughs> no elbows on the table. Always pass the serving dishes to the right. Proper attire is a must. Always present guests with a timely dinner invitation. And never, ever, ever be late to the dinner table. Getting your air ducts thoroughly cleaned takes the trained professionals at Stanley Steamer using the most powerful equipment to get the most powerful results. Our equipment goes deep inside your ducts, removing years of dirt, pet hair, allergens, even dust mites. 
Unlike other air duct cleaning companies, Stanley Steamer cleans your entire system. Just look at how much dirt can be removed. Call today for a free inspection and save $50 on a cleaning. Stanley Steamer gets your home cleaner. Has anyone seen my Reggie Miller bobblehead? You'll never believe it. Reggie Miller is moving into the Wendy's I work at. Look down there. He says he's here for March Madness, but he definitely chose us for the breakfast. Hello? My bobble head! The tournament doesn't start for like a week. Found it! It's going to be a long march. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's. Official breakfast of March Madness. Boom, baby! You know they're out there. Morning, noon, and night, eye allergens are on the attack, and the itch can stay with you 24 hours a day. Get Pat a Day Once Daily Relief Extra Strength, the first and only 24-hour eye allergy itch relief drop now without a prescription. A single drop of Pat a Day Once Daily Relief Extra Strength works on the cells that make your eyes itch fast. In minutes, you get relief that lasts 24 hours. That's a full day and night in one drop. Make it a Pat a Day with a drop that's right for you. Available everywhere. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. Welcome back, and thanks for staying with us. JEA is the largest public utility in Florida and the eighth largest in the nation. For the last three years, JEA has dominated the news with discussion of a potential sale and an uncertain future. JEA now has what many call a new direction and a clear direction. Here to discuss JEA is the new CEO of JEA, Jay Stowe. Jay, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for being with us. I think all of Jacksonville wants to meet you. Uh, welcome to Jacksonville. And so how about introducing yourself, tell us about your background and introducing yourself to the people well, of Jacksonville. First of all, thank you for having me. And it is uh, exciting to be here. It's exciting to be part of Jacksonville. I'm looking forward to meeting uh, lots of folks uh, in the coming years. Been here for about three months. Uh, and so I haven't gotten to see a lot of people, uh, but my background is in utility business. I grew up in a family. My father, my grandfather ran water systems in North Carolina. Uh, and I've worked in the municipal public utility world uh, for my entire career. And so I'm excited to be part of JEA and part of Jacksonville. So you're an engineer by background, from my understanding, is that right? I am, that's correct. And your career has been in public power? Public utilities, water, sewer, electric, natural gas, a little bit of everything, yes. Let's talk about that for a second, because obviously, as I just mentioned, JEA is a public utility, the largest in Florida. There are other models out there with private models, but you're a great advocate for the public model. How about describing that for us and tell, and talk to our viewers about that. So I think it's important that uh, JEA is part of Jacksonville uh, and we are, we're municipally owned public utility, which means we can focus on the customers only. Uh, we don't have to worry about profits. We don't have to worry about uh, answering to investors. Uh, we can serve the people of Jacksonville, Northeast Florida with a focus just on what's doing best, what, what, what is best for our customers. Jay, what attracted you to coming to Jacksonville and JEA, especially given the challenges over the last few years. What did you see here and why did you want to come to Jacksonville? So JEA has a reputation in the industry of being strong, foundationally strong. And so I've known about JEA for a number of years. Uh, and so the last couple of years were a little bit crazy, uh, but uh, the foundations of what JEA has, the people at JEA, the employees, the staff, and then Jacksonville and Florida is a wonderful place to be. So um, that's what drew me here was the strength of the staff, the people, uh, and the things that we can do to help serve Northeast Florida. Jay, you just said it's foundationally strong, but a couple years ago, the chairman of the board said that JEA was in a death spiral talking about its finances. So I'd like to take a moment and talk about JEA's finances. Is JEA in a death spiral? And what do you see for JEA's finances now and for the future? I try to make this as simple as I can. Absolutely not. We are strong financially, strong operationally. We've got a great team of people that are leading us into the future. And uh, financially, we're, we're in good shape. Uh, we will uh, continue to make, pay attention to what our rates are. I know that people pay our bills every single month. They pay us every month. And we have to be aware that some of the people, this is, might be their second or the third largest bill that they pay. So every decision we make is about how can we be sure that we're making the best decisions for our customers. Jay, in talking about the finances, one of the concerns raised by some was Plant Vogel, the nuclear power plant in Georgia. How about talking about for that for a second, both in terms of finances and what it means to the energy mix for the future for JEA? So I think the energy mix is probably the most important piece. To have a diverse uh, portfolio is important, and having nuclear as a base level uh, load is going to be something positive for us in the long haul. It is expensive. 
Uh, and so it, for, for the short term, it's gonna put a little bit of pressure on our rates uh, and we will deal with that. And in the long term, it's good for the environment with uh, low carbon uh, and it's gonna be positive because it gives us a good solid base uh, for our generation for, for years to come. Well, Jay, obviously, your background in public power is a sharp contrast to, to certainly Aaron Zahn, the prior CEO. And when it came to Plant Vogel, that was one of the concerns that led towards wanting to potentially sell. Your view is that Plant Vogel is potentially positive in the long run and, and for the reasons of energy mix and finances? So for energy mix, for sure. And on the long haul, we need to have that base load in order to keep on serving the customers of Northeast Florida and to do what's best for them, yes. Jay, uh, you've been here now three months. I know it's still early. You've got a new board. Uh, the community is looking forward to the future. What do you see as the maybe top three challenges facing JEA today? Well, the, the, last, the short term of the history over the last few years um, has undermined the trust in the community. Uh, and I want us to be sure that we're uh, doing the best that we can for our customers and rebuild that trust. Uh, that's going to take some time. Um, we've got new staff, new leadership, so building that leadership team is going to be important for us. Uh, and then maintaining the growth of dealing with uh, the new people that are coming into the community, being able to build out the water and sewer system, uh, make good decisions about the environment, and to keep supporting the public health, public safety, and economic development of Northeast Florida. Jay, we're a little short on time, but I have one last area I want to okay. talk to you about. Here in Jacksonville and around the country, we've seen what's happened in Texas with the power shortages they had and the outages. Is that possible here in Duval County? And what is JEA doing to make sure that does not happen in Jacksonville, Florida? So we have a different energy mix than they have there. So that puts us in a better spot. We're studying all the options. Uh, we are pretty good at responding to hurricanes and we're trying to be sure that we have strong resiliency beyond hurricanes to keep that from happening. Jacksonville and Houston, same uh, latitude, we same uh, types of weather could come here and so we're making lots of preparations to be sure that we're in the best shape we can be. Jay, uh, we have a minute left, but I did want to get one last topic. Okay. In the first couple segments, we talked about the new initiative, gas tax and addressing septic tanks, phasing them out, mm -hmm. but also JEA is looking at that. I know it's hard to do in a short period of time, but how about describing the scope of that problem and how JEA tends to address the phasing out of septic tanks? Septic tanks is a long-term history problem here going back 50, 60 years, uh, and we're committed to doing what's best for the environment and for the people of Northeast Florida and phasing out septic tanks, working with the city through whatever mechanisms that we can with the funding mechanisms that are put in place now is something we wanna keep on doing, try to make things better. Jay, thank you so much for spending this time with us, and welcome to Jacksonville. Thank you very much. And thank all of you for joining us. Kent Justice returns next week. This Week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning at this time. I'm Rick Mullaney, director of the Public Policy Institute at Jacksonville University. Thanks for watching On Air on Channel 4 and the CW17 and online at newsforjax.com. Have a great week. See why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida and South Georgia's number one source for local news. Thank you.